Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. We talk about the next big stars of 2010. We've got interactive with your emails, and we go in depth on Jack Flagger. <laughs> next on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. Number one since 1998 on television, ESPN Radio, and the World Wide Web. This is the Pro Wrestling Report with your host, the man they call Beanhead, Frank Cosentino, and Damian Nelson. Professional wrestling news, opinion, and information from fans for fans. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. Damian Nelson's in here alongside the man they call Meathead. Wait, this wait, is this is prime time. Prime time here, prime time there. Prime time. The air is better here in the studio this week. It doesn't smell like wet, soggy dog. Thank you so much for joining us, wherever you may be doing so, whether it be on Time Warner Cable in southeastern Wisconsin or on PWRShow.com. Meathead, we've got follow-up from this past Monday's ESPN radio show where we had Kevin yes, Nash as our guest. A uh, couple things we couldn't get to uh, because it was such an action-packed show. <laughs> uh, it's not as much action-packed as it was um, disturbing. Kevin Nash in a bathtub with a glass of wine. But you made and it in Kurt Angles and Jeff Jarrett's action figures. You made an admission, though, during that show. What did I say? You did the same thing. No, I you don't. You said it. When did I Roll say it? Roll the tape. You when said did it. I say it? You said it. No, I don't. Uh, we're going to talk about the new breed in wrestling. Who are the stars of 2010? And we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about Jack Swagger, this Sunday Night Hard <laughs> Justice. <laughs> Swagger! Hard Justice is on pay-per-view, the latest offering from TNA. We'll talk a little bit about that event as well. But meet at first, who are? Who are the big stars of 2010? Who is going to be the top of WWE and TNA in 2010? So many stars who have so much potential. We've seen the new talent initiative on ECW. We've seen a lot of those people graduate to both Raw and SmackDown. We've seen a lot of new talent. Is that what they call that now, graduating to Raw and SmackDown? I think so. I'm not sure if they call it that, but that's what uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it. Mm. But uh, also on the TNA side, we've seen a lot of new talent, specifically in the knockouts division, come on board. So, Meathead, now we discuss who are going to be those breakout stars for 2010. Who is going to be carrying that ball come Royal Rumble next year? Okay, so TNA's Royal Rumble. The time of the Royal Rumble. You're just saying January. January. Yes. Okay, I just want to be clear. Just want to be clear. I've got a couple of names that I know. I know of. one of Damien's already, and I hate to spoil it for everyone, but it's Rob Terry. Damien Nelson has told me in confidence, and I, if I put it out there, I'm sorry, Damien. Rob Terry is Damien Nelson's next big thing. It is what it is. That is inaccurate, and uh, he's willing to project right now. Rob any Terry. Evidence that I ever said that. Did you know God will strike you down for lying? He'll strike you where you are. Well, at least nothing can fall from the ceiling. Top talent, 2010. I think the top of that list as it pertains to World do you Wrestling want to Entertainment. Back and forth, or Let's do it. The top name on that list as it pertains to World Wrestling Entertainment for me would have to be John Morrison. John Morrison, a man who we've seen push as a singles competitor and on WWE television over the last few months has been in an elevated role. He has an amazing amount of athletic ability. He has an amazing amount of wrestling ability, and especially made if you look back to the days of Johnny Nitro when he was Eric Bischoff's bitch, he has come so far and gone so far from where he was, and I think he has that certain something that could make him one of the top talents in professional wrestling. I'll uh, counterpoint you, if you want. He's missing something. What's that? Salt? Pepper? On the microphone, he's awful. He has... No charisma. He but has he's no. He has no ability to reach out to the fan and connect with the fan. All he does is spots. He's an amazing athlete. He has amazing wrestling ability. But he's not a true professional wrestler because he hasn't made you care enough about him. Okay. I think his mic skills are acceptable. I don't think they're as horrible as you say. Uh, but again, I'm not sure if they, well, at this point, they don't need to be. Going forward, if he has to be one of those breakout stars of 2010, they certainly Correct. That's why I put to. that there. That's why I put that there for you. But can you see uh, Morrison Me? put into the rotation of 
the John Cena, Triple H, Randy Orton trilogy. Oh, no, 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 no. Morrison's not that good to dodge the boulders. What I mean by that, as far as the rotation goes, is can he work in main events and sustain pay-per-views with any one of those three talents? Let me ask Granted, you this question. Granted, they're on Raw. He's let on SmackDown. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. He's worked with Jeff Hardy. Would you buy a pay-per-view to watch John Morrison? I would. Would you? Well, they can't answer. They will. It's right under here. I certainly would. But then again, I appreciate his talent. And I'm not sure if... I've, I'm speaking more... I'm, I'm asking more of the general audience. Would you GP, buy... The humanoids? Would you buy a pay-per-view that was headlined by John Morrison? Both of so. them would say no. Uh, Most of them would say no. There are no. Morrison marks out there. But marks aren't the general audience. I hate to school you. I disagree. I hate to school you, but I it disagree. is what it is. When I say Morrison marks, I mean people who are fans of John Morrison. That's who buys the pay-per-views. We talked on the radio show this past Monday night about who would buy SummerSlam because DX is back. It's the Marks. It's the sheep. It's those that simply follow what they know and uh, may not be inclined to embrace anything new. I think John Morrison can be that person put into an elevated role in WWE, mm -hmm. and I think they're going there with him as well, based off of what we've seen in the last few weeks. They've got to build new talents. That's the reason we're discussing this. They've got to build new stars. They've got to build new main eventers. Is it a problem that Triple H, Randy Orton, um, John, John Cena. Cena, CM Punk, Jeff Hardy have pretty much dominated the main event scene for the last several years in WWE? Well, you can't say that Jeff Hardy and CM Punk have dominated. It's Orton, Triple H, Cena. Oh, well, yeah, on, on That's both sides of dominated. On both that sides, is and Edge as well. Uh, but you've right. got to throw more people into that mix and into that rotation. But again, in fairness to WWE, who else can they do it with right now? Don't, don't be fair to them because it's their company. They should have been building for years up until this point. But are you born with that talent should, and, or should they be cultivating that talent? Meaning, yes. have they yes. not done so with the Evan Boys yes. of the world? Have they let's, not done so with the CM Punks of the world? Let's have place they not it, done so? Let's place it you know, for the one time and one time only. In the realm of sports, okay, the major leagues has a minor league system. Triple A, Triple A, Double A, Single A, Rookie Ball. They have a minor league system. They have Winter Ball, Mexico Ball, Arizona Ball. They have a minor league system. The Farm NBA system. The NBA does have you know the CBA. They have those other leagues that they play. I don't know if the it's CBA. The NBA. Is that still That's around? where people like you play. The hockey. The football, they have the other leagues, the arena leagues, and all these other leagues where talent is cultivated. You learn how to play the game, college, you know, and so forth. But you have to also have some of that talent. So it's a give and take, an ebb and flow, if you will, that you have to have the talent and you have to be trained on how to use it. You can have all the talent in the world, a la John Morrison, but if you're not trained how to entice the crowd, to draw them in into your wrestling match, it won't matter. John Morrison first on my list, and uh, this list has no number of people that has to right. matter, but it's just simply the names that pop into our heads and that we want to talk about. Meet at who is your top person who you think is going to be that breakout star in 2010? Uh, Kurt Russell, otherwise known as Dolph Ziggler. Because he doesn't have to have the greatest wrestling ability. He has enough. But what he does have... Some would say it's perfection. But what he does have is he has enough attitude machismo to draw you in, to make you either love him or hate him. Dolph Ziggler? I would tend to agree with that. Dolph Ziggler, who has been elevated over the last few weeks, I think will continue to be elevated, and I think he is a man who can be on top of the card in WWE as well. Now, again, you might be sitting at home thinking, what are they talking about? We're not talking about now. We're not even talking about uh, could four be, months you know, now. we're talking January could be into the middle of, of the year 2010. Year. Who knows? But I'm just saying, these are the guys that I see moving up in the next 12 months. Next, I would have to say Ted DiBiase Jr., which he doesn't go by. It's just Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase Jr. paired with Cody Rhodes, part of Legacy. Cody's got a lot of potential, but the upside is with DiBiase. DiBiase has, I think, most everything that needs to be had. He's got this demeanor. 
this demeanor of, yes, I know I'm better than you, mm -hmm. this demeanor of, I can and will beat you, that is believable, that I think once it happens, because it will, that the two of them branch off and go their separate ways. I think Tiviasi is a man who can be one of the top stars Let in WWE. Let me piggyback on that thought, and, you know, my only uh, detraction from Tiviasi is Cody Rhodes. Once Cody Rhodes is shed, and I don't mean to infer, even though I did what on is Monday. He, uh, snake? I don't mean to infer, even though I did Dog on Monday spring? during the ra uh, radio show. Cody Rhodes is Marty Jannetty. See, you say that, but... Well, I used to call Matt Hardy Marty Jannetty. You did? And now we'll get Matt time. Hardy. Yeah, what is he doing? He's a ref in matches. He's a special enforcer. What in God's name was going on with his face? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't see it, did you? No, I didn't see it. It looked like he uh, spent... He was puffy. It looks like he got Kramered in the tanning bed. Yeah, he was puffy. Well, those guys paste that stuff on. Well, it's HD. High definition. Yeah, just like HD ready. Ted DiBiase Jr., I think, is uh, a breakout star in WWE. The next one, I would say, and this is a little early to potentially say this, so I'm looking at later 2010, but Sheamus. Now, that's a guy... Who doesn't have a tanning problem? That's a <laughs> guy that needs the... Uh, Fake bake. But I guess, and some of our uh, fans have talked about this on the forum at pwrshow.com, I guess that that's not abnormal in certain parts of Ireland to be so... See-through? <laughs> Transparent? This is a big man with great physicality, yeah. an amazing look, and a believable tough guy. He seems to be... Finley Jr. Point, seems to be, at this point, very solid on the stick, and I think... He will be quickly moved from ECW to either Raw or SmackDown. He looks and like a Thrush Jr. to me. Thrush into that role. And that's not an insult, folks. He looks like a legitimate You know what I, I thought about brawler. lately? WWE needs a good Norwegian. A good Norwegian. When's the last time we've seen a good Norwegian in wrestling? Like Sig Hansen from Deadliest Catch? That's what got me thinking about it. What's wrong? You have something against Norwegians? I just, is it that cruise you went on that one time? I just don't lust after them like you. I'm not lusting. I'm just saying WWE needs a good Norwegian. It's different things that we haven't necessarily seen before. You know what they haven't had is a meathead. And they never will. They've had a meat. You have another name from WWE? No, I'm going to go to TNA. No, no, go I'm right go, ahead. I'm going to go to TNA. Um, a guy that I really see moving on is... To um, the east side? To a deluxe apartment in the sky is Brutus Magnus. Hmm. You know, again, after he shed that crappy Road Warrior look that he had. Brutus Magnus, really? I believe him. Really? Really. What? What about him? What about him? His talent is uh, not as strong as it can be. Can be better. It's better than mine and yours, but it's not as strong as it can be. Can be better. He's still young in it, by the way. Very young. He's got the look. He's obviously cut. He's obviously defined. He's a big boy. And Much taller than I would have expected. And, again, he carries himself. It's something like you said with Adolf Ziggler. Carries himself. Something like Bruce I Magnus. I can't say I would have expected that. However, in TNA, I will say that one of the people that's going to be on top of the card, including at this It's Rob Sunday Terry. Night, here he goes, right here. You're the one who went the British invasion route. Uh, including this Sunday at Hard Justice, Man Morgan. That's why I brought up Rob Terry. Matt Morgan is already the next big thing. Your 2010 next big thing is Rob Terry. Admit it to the people. Matt Morgan, I think, can dominate on top of the card in TNA. And here's how you do it. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? Ashton Kutcher was Regis Philbin's fill-in while he was on vacation at one point last week. Why? I was a little surprised by that. But here's how you do it. Are you ready for this? Kevin Nash... Versus Matt Morgan. Major pay per view, do it about for Roy, whatever. Morgan goes over solidly. Solidly. And the reason I say Kevin Nash is they are similar in size. Um, the match, I think they can put on a good match, but I think that's how you elevate Morgan. I don't you know if it's a title that. They can put on a good match because what you're asking is Matt Morgan to carry. Kevin Nash, physically. Uh, no, no, no. Physically. You're asking him. I don't him, think so. Because ring psychology, Kevin, lights out. And Kevin's got it. Yeah, and that's but, what really makes a good match, to be honest with you. A right. match that draws you in emotionally and draws your interest in enough where you care about the outcome. 
Uh, many would say that the Matt Morgan AJ Styles match from Impact last week was a lot better than anyone would have ever expected because AJ was carrying Matt. Well, it takes two to tango, and I think that match was a little spot heavy. It was well executed, and I think rated higher than maybe it would have been because AJ Styles did not win. But I think a match, a good match, given enough time and given enough significance between the two of them, can elevate Matt Morgan to that main event spot for 2010. I think a legitimate title shot for Matt Morgan might also get him there, too. Regardless of who it's against. Mm -hmm. A legitimate title but shot. But I don't think you throw him into it. I don't no, keep something, it. No, no, something, yeah, Triple something H, he earns. Triple something H, earns. 2000, 2001. Well, it was 2000, ah, I forget the year. But anyways, it was when he had the match with Mick Foley at the Royal Rumble. Remember Triple H kept having those matches that you knew he wasn't going to win. But what did he do? Every month he won those matches. Never won a title, I don't believe, in that series, but won the matches time and time again. And that that is what gave Triple H the credibility he needed to be in the position he is in now in wrestling. Because every month he said, there's no way Triple H is going to win a Hell in a Cell with Mick Foley or a hardcore match with Mick Foley or whatever it may have been. But he somehow or another pulled it out each and every time. It's the slow build, which wrestling doesn't do enough of anymore. It's the slow build that I think, that I think, could put Matt Morgan in the spot on top of TNA. My guy. Your TNA. guy. Another big guy, but not as big as Matt Morgan. But I want to see, if he doesn't use it in 2009, I want to see in 2010, Hernandez get that heavyweight Ooh. title shot. <laughs> and I want to see him go over. I don't care if it's just a transitional champion, you know, one month, the Abyss, the Rhino, the Raven, transitional, give him the belt. Uh, Hernandez has said on this very program that uh, he will be world champion, he said, by years in. Okay. Like I said, if it's not for 2009, 2010, maybe you could use the heavyweight, the TNA heavyweight championship to get him into the main event. I think sooner than later is the case with Hernandez. He's been around enough, people respect him enough, people know about his talents enough, people know about the... You know what you're going to get. You know what you're going to get from Hernandez. Exactly. So I think... Quicker is better than later, which means throw a title on him. Maybe he does take the world title. Remember how shocking it was when CNM, CM Punk became the world heavyweight champion? No one expected it the first time he did it. I think you, 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 you do something like that with their Hernandez and really say, wow, I could have never thought this would happen because he's really, aside from last week and this past week on Impact, he's not really, uh, has not been really involved with the main event picture. I think that situation for Hernandez. You throw him into the title, give him the title, I think it will work out very well. There you go. The final name on my list anyways would have to be the man who is ready to fly, AJ Styles. Again, a slow build, which they're somewhat doing. A slow build. Where but, how do, but i got to ask you, how do they slow build a three-time champion? Correct. But it's been about a minute since he's had the title. And I think AJ Styles, as I've said many times before, has realized how big a star he is, how realized how big a star he can be, and now has the backing, the entrance, the performance, the presentation that he needs to be recognized as that star. I can't think of anything missing from AJ right now. Yeah. He's a uh, five-tool player. I'm sorry? That's a sports reference. We want to understand. What are the five tools? What, who, what, when, where, what? No, five tools. If you're talking baseball. You're talking, the bat, right? the mound. you're talking hitting, you're talking power, you're talking um, sure. speed, you're talking uh, arm, and you're talking overall just, you know, skill. We're very intrigued as to who you think might be the big stars in 2010. Don't think we're not going to come back and look at this and say who was And also, I really don't have anybody else. Accurate. Thank you for not asking, because I don't really have anybody else to put on the list. I'm going to be honest. I don't have anybody the else. The director I don't, here was counting me down. We had to move on to the next segment. I don't really have any... Thanks. I don't really have anybody else to put on there. I mean, you've got your little spot guys that are missing way too much. All right, let's go on to PWR Interactive. We've got a lot of your emails, and this is a follow-up from yesterday's Q&A show on PWRshow.com. We've got a lot of your emails, and uh, you can send those to comments at PWRshow.com. We answer most, if not all, of them. Right here on the we attempt to. program. We attempt to. The first one comes from T.N. Lloyd from Nashville, Tennessee, who says, I have been a wrestling fan for 35 years. Growing up in the South and being a wrestling fan, my earliest memories are of watching Jerry Lawler and company. I remember the Tupelo concession stand brawl 
Lawler's matches with Jerry Briscoe, Harley Race, etc. I do not understand why you guys do not care for the King. None of you ever mention him when you talk commentators unless it is despairingly. It is not the fact that I grew up marveling at his promo work, believing in his fist drop, but I believe without him, Raw suffers in a major way. I have an opinion on King, but we'll wait until the email's over. Maybe the smart fans, quote-unquote, think he is beneath them, but one thing we all need to remember is that smart fans in the IWC only make up a fourth at the most of the general wrestling populace. He's funny most of the time. He puts a talent over and down himself. Heck, he still has more in-ring talent than some of the quote-unquote boys. Maybe it's just the hometowner in me. Heck, call me a mark, quote-unquote, but in my opinion, he is by far the best at what he does right now. I respect and love the weasel, but Lawler is just as good, if not better. I used to call in on the Don West radio show here in Nashville, and Don is a great guy and a solid announcer, but Lawler is better. So, in closing, T.N. Lloyd says, just curious, why no Lawler love? Hmm. You know, T.N., I'm not sure... Yeah, I'm not sure we've expressed any lack of love for Jerry. It's not the It's not the lack of love. Jerry... By his own admission, and this isn't something that you've heard from interviews or whatever, is mailing it in every week. He's been carrying the show since Cole got brought over. Yeah, he's mailing it in. Because he understands the product is... A well, I, I would imagine that he's burnt. working with Michael Cole isn't the best what situation was Jerry, in the world What for was him? Jerry the King Lawler's last break? Uh, 2002, I believe, when, when uh, uh, he, he went with Stacy. Mm-hmm. You know, I, Jerry Lawler is excellent at what he does. Yes, I think he at is. times he gets a bit cliched, and I think at times his jokes become repetitive. But he's still extremely entertaining. Uh, the question that maybe needs to be asked is, who is the best color man in the business right now? It's clearly Jerry Lawler. Matt Stryker is a close second. I don't know. I don't well, you know. got three, four choices. You got Jerry Lawler, you got Don West, you got Matt Stryker, and you got good old J.R. Jim Ross, who's not really a color guy. No, he's not. Are you asking the he question? He sits on the color side of the table. Though. Yeah. Are you asking who entertains me the most? Who's well, just in your opinion, the best color commentator right, right now, now in business? And it's because I'm a TNA Mark this week. Oh, you are. This week, it's Don West. He's entertaining me the most. I take my headsets off and go get me some. Jerry, his gimmick is tired to me. But isn't there a little bit of Jerry Lawler, a little bit of Bobby Heenan in Don West's sure. presentation as a winner? Sure. sure, there is. And not that Jerry isn't still Hall of Fame material, because he is. Uh, as far as wrestling and announcing, Jerry's Hall of Fame. Thank you for that email, TN Lloyd from Nashville, Tennessee, moving right along. We got this from a user on YouTube called The Wrestling Addict. He says, I really love the way Matt Hardy did the count and walked out last Friday. I'm hoping if Jeff leaves, Matt could come back as a major face and be world champion by the end of 2009. As long as he stops using the fake bait, man, because that spray on tan is terrible. Those guys are orange. This comes from a... Emailer. Emailer. Yeah. Uh, whose name is not on here, but they... It is, won't but give you the can't find address. it. Um, I'll let you find it after this, yeah, prick. Uh, this emailer says, Do you agree that WWE is stale today because there is no passion in the product. We could miss a whole month of Raw and nothing would change. Give us a reason to watch, so put some emotion into it. No more random number one contender matches for a feud. Put two guys together that truly hate each other. I gotta buy into almost everything he just said. I don't feel any passion in what's going on. Random number one contender matches. Have how is Steven Regal the number one contender? I, I, I love it, but how? Did he do something to get there? Nothing. Uh, he did that gum commercial. I wholeheartedly agree. Passion is certainly what's missing, and the emotional buy-in from the fans. Is I'm sorry, missing. Sunshine. P.S. You guys should be the guest host of Raw. Of course, Meathead would just bring back Bischoff and call Raw, Raw Nitro. I just transformed again. Nigel Macy sends this in. Uh, do you think The Undertaker will come back to the WWE? I'm sorry, Josh is the person that sent this in. Do you think The Undertaker will come back to the WWE? Yes. Yes. Uh, Peter Martin sends this in. Hey, Damien, how was the referee job in WWE? I was working hard this week. You were on EC Dub. I was. And I know this will never happen, but if John Cena went to TNA with the same gimmick, 
TNA will move up faster. And think about it. John Cena is a top WWE star and media star. John Cena will promote TNA the way they want it to be. Purely yeah, hypothetical. It's purely hypothetical, but let's stop and ponder. Let's stop and ponder. TNA, somehow, some way, just got the prototype, John Cena. Now, is that his legitimate name? Is he John Cena? John Cena, Cena? I believe, is his God-given. Okay, so that means he gets to be John Cena mm -hmm. in TNA. That may put them over the top. It'll never happen. Let me pull back the never. In my lifetime of wrestling viewing, it'll never happen. Pat sends this in. Hey, guys, is it just me, or do you also think that the TNA Legends title is a big waste of time? No, it's just a big belt, apparently. <laughs> uh, uh, do you think on. TNA will be better off getting rid of it and bring on a new title, like a TV title or North American title, and let no. people like Eric Young, Homicide Hernandez, Matt Morgan, and others hold it? No. The Legends title is doing its due diligence right now. There's only one show. How many titles are you going to have on one show? YouTube user by the name of Sedge425 sends this in on your August 7th primetime show. You guys were talking about a fan's email where he brought up TNA's use of older WWE talent. I think you two totally missed the point. It's not about WWE talent being in TNA. It's how they are used. No matter how you slice it, TNA pushes WWE talent who, for the most part, are completely past their prime over younger stars and at times bury themselves in their original talent. Kurt Angle, for example, in his first two matches beat TNA champion Abyss and then Samoa Joe. The Originals would later win every TNA championship at the same time. I'm sorry, and would later win every TNA championship at the same time. How did that push anyone but a well-known former WWE talent over the rest of the company? So, at the end of the day, because it's obvious they're not accomplishing anything besides smoothing over washed-up talent's egos, what's the point of pushing these uh, things? Come on now. You know what they've accomplished? Uh, did you listen to the radio show at pwrshow.com on iTunes? To it. Did you listen to it? I listened to it. Because I believe the ratings are up. 9% so far this year since October of 2008 when the main event mafia so was found. So, does that mean... Uh, found it. Formed. Formed. Does that mean that they're accomplishing something? What are they accomplishing? More ad revenue? More ratings? The business is growing? This comes from Duncan... I heard you guys wondering on a recent radio show why TNA does such good business on the road in the UK. It's probably because TNA airs in the UK on Bravo, which is only, which is on any standard cable or satellite package available, including pay-per-view shown free, but with a 72-hour delay. To get WWE, you have to pay for Sky Sports in addition to your normal package, and that, is, that does not come cheap. Uh, with uh, pay-per-view shown on the same basis. It's kind of like SmackDown being more, the more viewed show because it's available here in the States, free on my network. You know, With pay-per-view shown on the same basis as the U.S., oddly enough, this arrangement may well give TNA much more exposure in the U.K. than WWE, even though it's a much smaller company. That from Well, you know what else puts it over, too, is Rob Terry. Uh, TNA Impact again this past week with 70,000 viewers beat WWE, Raw, SmackDown, and ECW. So that point is a valid one, though, about the availability of those programs over in the Wait, UK. Wait, say that again. 70,000 viewers. Where? In the UK? In the UK. Okay. Okay. But then again, like I said, Damien's guy, Rob Terry, is helping put over you TNA. You can send your emails to comments at pwrshow.com. Many of them will make air on this program. Meathead, let's talk about in-depth. Let's go in-depth and talk about Jack... <laughs> Flutter! I didn't have any spit on that one. From Sorry. Oklahoma State University, I believe. A man it's one of JR's boys. ECW uh, just a while back and had a certain something. A uh, swagger? It had a swagger to his name. Uh, very well executed as far as his presentation, which is very important in this business nowadays. And his athletic ability is there as well. He is a great antagonist. He is a man who's got the wrestling skills. He's got the natural athletic talent. And he is a man who could be, while he wasn't one of those names we talked about earlier, could be someone who plays a more prominent role in WWE going forward. Swagger right now, who's already a former ECW champion, Swagger right now has, again, like a Ted DiBiase, like a Dolph Ziggler, a cockiness, an air about him. Is it the push-ups? When he walks to the ring, it's not the push-ups. He carries himself as a champion. It's unfortunate. And he is former ECW champion. As I already said. 
it's unfortunate that he has that lisp. I know that he's not, you know. Cody's lisp was pointed out, I believe, this past week on Raw. Possibly. It's not that the lisp is his fault, but to be that overall star, if you want to be that John Cena, that Triple H, that Randy Orton, you have to be that five-tool player. You have to have everything, the look, everything. Swagger may be missing part of that. He could be a main event player. He really could. But I don't think Swagger's got what it takes to get the movie deals, get the commercials, Great point. get the appearances over get on Star on Psych, get the you know appearances on Conan O'Brien, get the appearances on Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. Oh, wow, that's David Letterman. Whoever WWE gives them, right? But they give them their top guys: your Jerichos, your Big Shows, your Cenas, your Ordens, your Triple Hs. That's it. And then when Undertaker was talking when he was the biker. He could be one of those guys. Good point. TNA Hard Justice is this Sunday on pay-per-view. Uh, before we get to that, we want to get your thoughts on Jack Swagger. In Swagger! The about Jack Swagger. I hope you hated that. His career and potentially going forward. But meet Ed this Sunday on pay-per-view. It is Hard Justice. Uh, we know Kevin Nash will take on Mick Foley. And, uh, well, every match is hardcore, I believe. But this per Kevin Nash. Per Kevin Nash. He does not want to bleed. He's got a ballet search going on. I hope he gets Marissa to me. We're going to talk about that tomorrow on P... I'm sorry, we talked about Hard Justice. I did anyways a little earlier today on PWR Express. Express. So make sure you check that out. And again, PWR Express daily updates at PWRShow.com Monday through Friday each and every, every week. That's how I say it in the hood, right, Gary? Hey, cut my cable back on. Also, make sure you take the show with you on iTunes. All episodes of the Pro Wrestling Report, including our ESPN radio show, are available on iTunes each and every week. All you got to do is subscribe to one of the top podcasts in professional wrestling available on iTunes. Again, subscribe to that and really uh, get those it's episodes free. Brought, tr brought to your iPod, iPhone, what have you, as soon as they're it's available. It's free. And if you're from Milwaukee, free is me. Speaking of free, I'd like to be set free from the man they call Meathead. So, oh, no. that is the end of this week's show here on the Pro Wrestling Report. For the man they call Meathead, for the cause, and for Dave Hero, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you for tuning in. And we will see you Sunday, Sunday, Sunday night, right after <laughs> Sunday, Hard Sunday, Justice. Sunday, Sunday! Right after Hard Justice on pay-per-view, we will be live on 540 ESPN, streaming at PWRShow.com. Make sure you tune in and tell us what your thoughts were of TNA Hard Justice. We'll see you again next week.